Peyton Cruz. Alex Morris is a normal 12-year-old girl. She is a soccer player, a dancer, and a long-distance runner. Life was normal for her until she was diagnosed with celiac disease. Celiac disease prevents anyone from eating anything that is gluten. French, food, French bread was her favorite food, but she can no longer eat it anymore. We have all eaten school lunch here at one point. Here at Zamrota Mazeppa, we offer very few diets that would apply to a student like Alex. The United States Department of Agriculture should require the schools to serve and also offer a variety of meals that are gluten-free, vegan, and vegetarian. First, I will talk about why it is a problem that these students cannot eat school lunch. Then I will talk about how the CMPP can update their nutrition guidelines to include meals for students with special diets. The current problem is that students who are gluten-free, vegan, and vegetarian cannot eat school lunch or have difficulty doing it. According to the Celiac Disease Foundation, reviewed by a medical advisory board published in 2016 and managed by Marilyn Geller, celiac disease is a genetic autoimmune disorder where the ingestion of gluten leads to damage of the small intestine. If a student who has celiac disease were to continually eat gluten, they could receive some of the long-term effects of celiacs. Some of the long-term effects include miscarriage, dementia, and epileptic seizures. Non-celiac gluten sensitivity is when a patient shows symptoms of celiacs but does not test positive for it. Other students who are having difficulties eating school lunch are vegans and vegetarians. According to a brochure called Veganism in a Nutshell, created by the Vegetarian Resource Group, a nonprofit organization that informs the public on veganism and vegetarianism, published in 2016, vegetarians are people who do not eat meat, fish, or poultry. Vegans do not eat meat, fish, poultry, honey, dairy products, or anything that uses animal products. Some students decide to become vegans or vegetarians because of ethical beliefs. Others may have a meat intolerance. A meat intolerance is when a person has negative effects when they eat a certain type of meat or any kind of meat. According to the Celiac Disease Foundation, one in 100 people in the entire world will be affected by celiac disease. Also, two and a half million Americans remain undiagnosed. The symptoms of celiac disease often does not appear or are very minimum. You could have celiac disease right now and not know about it. When a student cannot eat the school lunch, they miss out on a variety of meals, parents may have to spend more on groceries, and schools miss out on extra money. According to Report 117, created by the United States Department of Agriculture, published on May, of, May 2011, written by Michael Olinger, Catherine Ralston, and Joanne Guffey, the average cost of a school lunch in America is $2.70. So when vegans, vegetarians, and gluten-free students are unsatisfied with lunch and decide not to buy it anymore, schools lose on average $2.70. Parents may also have to start to spend more on groceries. According to a report posted by the United States Department of Agriculture called Official USDA Food Plans, Cost of Food at Home at Four Levels, in October of 2016, written by nutritionists and dietitians of the CMPP, the average monthly cost of an at-home meal between the ages of 14 and 18 is $163.70 in groceries. No, $172.30. The average cost for a female is $163.70. Parents can alleviate these costs or get rid of them if they were to opt for school lunches instead of packing their own kids. Parents can also give their kids access to a nutritionally balanced meal that offers fresh fruits and vegetables for a good price. According to an article written by Dr. Nicole Darman and Dr. Adam Drunowski, who are nutrition specialists, called Contribution of Food Prices and Diet Costs to Socioeconomic disparities in diet quality and health. A systematic review and analysis published October 1st, 2015. Montgomery Middle School decided to switch out the nutrition, more nutritional value that a food has, the more it will cost rather than the ones with lower nutritional value. For example, fresh carrots will cost more than a bag of potato chips. Parents can get their kids a nutritionally balanced meal for a good price, but they cannot buy this meal for their kids if it does not fit their kids' diet. Now that we know why it is a problem that these students cannot eat lunch, we can see how we can help them to eat it again. The United States Department of Agriculture Food Nutrition Service should require schools to offer meals that apply to gluten-free, vegan, and vegetarian students. They should also offer a variety of meals to these options. Once the CMPP, Center for Nutrition Policy and Promotion, updates these standards, the schools, parents, and students will see benefits. The CMPP sets guidelines based on scientific research for nutrition. Schools may lose reimbursement or bonuses from the government if they do not follow these guidelines. Adding or substituting a special diet dish for a traditional one can easily be executed by schools. 
According to an article posted by the Journal of School of Health called Soy Goes to School, Acceptance of Healthful Vegetarian Options in Maryland Middle School Lunches, written by Kathleen Laser, Nancy Chapman, and Elise Levine, posted in April of 2010, Montgomery Middle School decided to switch out half of their traditional dishes for soy-based dishes. The conclusion was that equal amounts of traditional dishes and soy-based dishes were purchased. This could happen at schools all across America. Also, kids who also do not follow these strict diets may decide to try new foods. According to an article called St. Christopher Gets Tangled Up in the Green, published by the New State Print on May 6, 2002, written by B. Wilson, an author of many nutrition books, at St. Christopher School, the cooks make 16 different freshly made salads and hot dishes, traditional and vegetarian. One day the cooks made 850 vegetarian hot dogs and 500 of them were eaten. I guarantee you not all 500 of those kids were vegetarians. With this passing, students, parents, and schools will see the benefits. In conclusion, the United States Department of Agriculture should require schools to offer meals that are vegetarian, gluten-free, and vegan. This will help improve the school systems for parents, school, schools, and students. This can be done if the CMPB updates their nutrition standards. A student like Alex should not be missing out on the opportunity to enjoy lunch with her classmates. 622.